Hello, everybody, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Kigali, Rwanda, for the FIBA Women's Zephyr Basket 2023, and it's quarterfinals day, game day five. We're going to watch Cameroon and Senegal. Well, Cameroon, Senegal, then Mali, Guinea. Rwanda, Uganda, and wrapping things up with Nigeria, Mozambique. So, what an exciting time, folks. This has been the road to the final. So, you can see we are in the upper right corner there. The winner of this game takes on the winner of Mali, Guinea. And uh, just a couple wins away from at least getting to the podium for both of these teams. Uh, exciting times. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Ife Abekwe. Ife, welcome here. What, what are your projections for today's game? Um, this is going to be definitely one of the physical games today, and uh, I'm really excited to see. Last night, uh, Senegal played. They, um, they beat Egypt to advance, and last night, our pro was that they won a game and had the opportunity to play and get the confidence, but a con would be the veteran players didn't have that type of rest. Um, this game will be a, a very mental toughness game for Senegal, so they definitely have to show up and uh, from start to finish. We saw the best of Senegal in their last game. Uh, it hasn't been a great tournament, but at least they got a win. Yeah. Uh, Cameroon, it's been, they've had a little bit of adversity. Yeah. Uh, but overall, they've been pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, they haven't played for two days. So a pro for that is they got to rest. But a con for that is that they're not in that game rhythm. I mean, I'm sure these two days they were able to rest and practice, but it's so different when it's, uh, it's a game level, so I mean, there's keys to the game for Cameroon. Get to the free throw line and uh, be more aggressive. I think they've been one of the most consistent teams here. Very level-headed, very poised, and I think that uh, they definitely know that they need to come out here and battle against Senegal. Senegal has always been a top contender. I've been saying that since day one, but so has Cameroon. So I think they're ready to play. I've been watching them warm up. They, they have that hunger in their eyes, and it's seen. Well, I'm not gonna hit that huge shot. You know, they got up, a, they got up big on uh, Mozambique in that first game and really had to pull out all stops at the end. It was Makati to the rescue with the three-pointer, and of course, uh, they were decisive winners. Well, not decisive, but they had an uncomfortable game against Guinea, but they, they won that one. And, and now I think the tournament starts really for both of these teams. So we are gonna have a pause for the playing of the national anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly stand up for the national anthems, starting with the national anthem of Senegal. Please remain standing for the national anthem of Cameroon.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the match Okay, the referees for today's game, Ayubi Claudio, excuse me, uh, Claudio Ayubia, Julio, Julio Ayana, they, they switch it up on us. They, they go from last names to first names some days, and they go from first names to last names. So I'll get those to you in just a second here. But the main thing is we do have three referees, and uh, we were about ready to, to rumble. So um, quarterfinals day in the BK Arena, and all excitement. That's, again, I think this is when the start of this tournament really is uh, for both of these teams. I think the great thing for Senegal is, yes, they've had it tough, but uh, they can really come out strong today. So, Sar, Fatou Jang, Yassine Diop back in the starting line today. She was great. Fatou Pui, perhaps a surprise starter, and uh, Fatou Yang, Jang in the starting spot. She was terrific in uh, the final qualification for the quarterfinal win. And Traore coming off the bench, the captain, Dillard, and I'm not surprised really. Priore looked a little tired. Yes, uh, she did. off a guy, the veteran head coach. And for Cameroon, starting five will be Jessica Thomas, Monique Makani, Marina Eodu, Karin Selatza, and Ermin Ngeko, who was uh, really excelled the other day. And uh, Magun, Mokoko, and Koyot, Epa, Dimite, Kinwi, and Guafang coming off the bench. It's, it's nice to see Suatsa in the starting lineup. Yeah, because she didn't play in the last game. She I think didn't. we decided she was so tired. And I think she had cramps too. Yeah, yeah. maybe not, you know, banged up a little bit. And enjoy the coach of Cameroon as well. So there he is. Ahmed and Bombo. Julia, also coaches in France. He came over here when I was uh, preparing, and he's just so excited for uh, his team uh, today to face. Cameroon is get to the free throw line, as I said before, and for Jessica Thomas, their nationalized player to step up, she's been a great facilitator in their two games, but I think she could be a little bit more of an offensive threat, and so hopefully she understands that. She could do more and not just pass the ball, but also score. Makami, Edwo, Efe uh, played consistently in the, uh, their two games, so I definitely think they'll be consistent today, and Salatza had an amazing game the first game, and as you said, she did not play uh, the second game, but she's still the starting lineup tonight, and I just think that this Cameroon team is very focused and ready to play. And just to speak on and harp on Senegal, they lost their first two games and beat Egypt in the uh, qualification round to be here today in the quarterfinals. So keys to the game for them is Senegal has, to, has that inside dominance, but they must start the game strong. They had 21 turnovers against Egypt, and that's just too much for this dominant team. So um, I think they have grown from each game and that they'll come out here and definitely be prepared and ready to play. This is going to be a physical, fierce game here at Afro Basket in Rwanda 2023, and I'm excited. Well, I'm not surprised you played in uh, games like this Yeah. for Nigeria. They're going to be going for a fourth consecutive title in this competition. And uh, Cameroon, this is a rematch of that third place game. I can't remember if you, uh, I can't remember if you mentioned that from 2021, but yeah, it was one yeah. by Cameroon. So one by Cameroon, 53 to 49, and that was a really amazing game in the 2021 FIBA Afro Basket uh, tournament. And Cameroon, Cameroon got third place. I mean, so they, they're they're not new to battling each other. No, and, you know, some of these uh, players in that team, some not. But, I mean, the reality is new year, new team, new new vibe. And representing that name on your chest yeah. and having that pride for your country. That's the most important thing. Exactly. It is Cameroon versus Senegal basketball. So I think we're going to throw this up again. That would have been a good start for Cameroon to play basket.
So good afternoon, everybody. We are underway here, Cameroon and Senegal. And three point shot. No good here at the start. Coach Cameroon. A presence. She's so long and lean. Long, lean, and mean. Or long, lean, and wants to be mean. Who's the veteran Chang? Shot clock. Bounce to the spire. They have to get it inside. They do. They play Sar. Nice turnaround. I think a good matchup for us to look at is number eight. Monique Makani and number 24 on Senegal, Yassine Diop. That, that's going to be a battle of the guards at that three position. Zalatza, well, looking like her old self. Maybe the not having played for several days has been good for yeah. her. You can just see it in her eyes. Yeah, she was, even two days after their opener against Mozambique, she was still feeling it. You can see, here's Yassine Diop. Senegal not able to get the rebound. Jan, so back to Thomas. This is the matchup I was talking about. These two going at it. There are. Salatza so comes up with the basketball. out of her hands. Yeah, she got, looked like she might have been hit on the arm. Didn't say too much. But definitely somebody got away with one for the Senegal there. Uh, Sar number six on Senegal for, uh, against Salatse on um, Cameroon number 23. That's definitely a matchup to watch. Jessica Thomas. We with the rebound. And hit a couple of threes in the first quarter yesterday. Thomas pulls up. This is a short one. I mean, she's taking two shots, but the fact that she's even taking them early in the game is something that is really good for Cameroon right now. And I know as time goes down, they will start to fall. John, this is from the line. Look past the Lotsa. I love watching Jessica Thomas uh, in the warmups. Yeah, she's always the first out here, getting her preparation, being warm, and just being focused. Really has some great dribbling drill, uh, drills. Yeah, she did. Basketball passed out of bounds by Chang. Great game the other day. Ooh. 
times like Sarr got hit in the face by Salazza. That's what pulls up. And this is. I'm loving the tempo and the speed of how both teams are playing. They understand who they need to facilitate to and get the shots to. Lots of missing in from deep. Ball goes out of bounds. And Coach Enjoya wants to see a little bit more movement, some more passing on offense before taking those early shots. Yeah, but the pace is really good. Drives in, Salazza hands it off to Thomas. Gecko, close enough. Interesting matchup. Gets inside, and just not even close to stopping her down, really. Yeah, what a big, strong move. Well, she gave Kaba fits the other day for Guinea. You know that Kaba can do it. Gone on the baseline there, yeah, that's more like it. I mean, she, she had an amazing game yesterday, 17 points and 10 rebounds for her, so she definitely is, is stepping up for Senegal. Gecko, spins, turns, goes right at Gian and scores. And you can see that Don just can't defend against Ngeko right now. Her back to the basket game is just too strong. And you wonder, because she got that two, two easy baskets, does Senegal change their defense? Do they go in a zone, or do they send two to her? And uh, we'll see if definitely subs are coming in, so we'll see if the, they, they adjust to their defense. But then the offensive rebound by Salata. And it's going to be a big trip down the floor for Cameroon. And it is five-point trip down the floor as Eodu buries the three-point. Je te dis que le duo Hermine elle prend la balle et va sur sa gauche. D'abord, première chose, on doit l'empêcher d'avoir la balle. Deuxièmement, elle va sur sa main gauche. Sa... Même pour à droite, elle revient à gauche. Fatou, on t'a dit ça hier. Tu as besoin de double maquillage pour libérer des chutes après. Ok, tu gardes devant, s'il te plaît, devant. On continue à travailler ensemble, en série 2. Mettez les systèmes qu'on a pris à l'entraînement et soyez durs encore dans le repli et dans le, dans le match-up. Dans le match-up, sortez vite sur vos filles. Ne leur donnez pas le tir ouvert. Oui, oui, oui. Ne donnez pas le tir ouvert, s'il vous plaît. OK. Allez, on y va. Go. Get the feeling that Senegal need to uh, put the brakes on this start for Cameroon, or else they could be in real trouble. Yeah, Senegal has been having a slow start in these couple of games, but they found their rhythm and they picked it up. So I definitely believe that they're going to get it going. Priore has checked into the game, the captain. Also, Dillard comes into the game. Into the corner it goes. And Atani knocks it away. She gives it to Young. And I tell you what, there's probably not a worse indicator or a more severe indicator of how badly things are going for Senegal than to call a timeout and then don't get a shot off in the 24 second shot. Yeah, I mean that just shows that are you not are you not locked in? Are you not willing to execute? Gecko, she is Powers her way down low. Yeah, this time doesn't finish it. Hillard 
Oh, how about that? Can't. No recipe for three point shots getting you back. No better recipe. Either. Yeah, she was taken out of the starting lineup, so being on the floor right now and hitting her first shot is definitely confidence for her. Stepped out of bounds. gets down low and has no problem putting it off the glass and in. Great bat pass by Monique McAdoo. subbed in and she played seven minutes yesterday with two points so I think it's just giving you know when you put those young players in at moments like this it's just to give the veteran players players that actually play a little bit of a rest time so I mean she's doing well she's a big body on the court right now. Yeah. 21 is 22 years of age Diller fouled and whistle blows. She has six points. But since that opening game, you know, we just haven't seen much from Priore. I think she just gave her all that game. It was an amazing performance by her. Especially in the fourth quarter. Here she is. I mean, she's really taking all the shots that she would normally take. It's just not falling. And maybe she doesn't have that leg under her. I mean, they played three games. They played yesterday. Ever catches it in the paint. Now the pass off to Chang. He's able to catch it, gets in, and is fouled. But I still think the leadership of Ture on the, on the floor right now and all these games have actually helped Senegal. So regardless if she is scoring or not, she's actually she's rebounding. She's being a team player. She's being the captain and the leader. So I think she knows that.
Six point lead here in the final minute. Cameroon leading in this first quarterfinal of the day. Pass, Effa goes in. Well, just layup after layup. And it's all good right now for Cameroon. And that three point shot doesn't drop for Kuna. So, one quarter in the books. Things looking promising here for Cameroon against Senegal. They lead it 19 to 11. As you see here, Senegal is only shooting 38% from the two, while Cameroon is shooting 67. I mean, that's going to be a thing to look at. I mean, they've been getting the balls in the paint. They've had those high post key shots, but they they're not falling. And, but it is the first quarter, and uh, they have three quarters to go. Yeah, the, it doesn't seem like there's any sense of panic over on the Senegal bench, but there's a difference between panicking and having a sense of urgency. I'm not sure I see that either. Senegal, the team that we're seeing in this tournament, uh, tournament in Senegal, they're not a team that's going to panic. They've showed that. They definitely, I like how they have poise in that sense, but you're right. They don't have that sense of urgency, and I think that's a different, and they don't have that urgency right now. And we hope that they come out here in the second quarter and, and show something. Yeah, it's an eight-point difference. and. Uh... But the thing is Already. that they're not taking bad shots. They're just not making it. And time and time again, we've seen that over the course of this tournament. And that's when, as a player, you just have to be focused. Focus on your shot. One, two, use your legs. Use your follow through. Land. And then I just think that's it. Scanning the barcode to get courtside 1891 for video stream schedules and scores. Get it in your smartphone today. So I just want, just want to clear something up at the start of the game, uh, didn't kind of rush through the names of the referees, and then they disappeared. So it's uh, Julio Ayano from Panama, Eric Otieno from Kenya, and Claudio Eubia from Angola. So those are the, those are the men making the calls. And uh, eight point difference. Oh. Have a look. Well, not going to erase their hands. Got the hammer with that call. They're trying to isolate that mismatch, and it was just. A double team coming, waiting for Trey on the on the low post. Oh, the ball is traveling. She definitely did travel. So danger time for Senegal here. They don't want to fall too much uh, farther behind. Yeah, the Oder drives in, dumps it off to Effa, and she's blocked from behind by Diller. Just getting so many catches in the low post, right at the basket. Yeah. Cameroon knows where their one of their strengths are, and that is getting the ball in the paint, and they've been doing that time and time again. And I said that in the beginning of the first quarter. Will Senegal change their defense? And they did. They actually were in the zone. So Makani missing from the corner. Drives in. And Priory is 
struggles from three-point range. Long, now Dillard. Ball goes out of bounds. right here, trying to shake up Cameroon's offense because they were just literally killing them down in the paint. There is Salaksa missing everything. Well, this is the way back into the game. Yeah, definitely is. I mean, Senegal changed their defense for Cameroon, for Cameroon to shoot those shots and not go inside. Here comes Thomas. And Effa gets it and puts it up and in. Uh, that's much better for Cameroon. Emma already with six points. Diller. Short jumper. She'll make that one all day. Effa came in averaging four and a half points per game, so that just shows you how easy it's been for her to catch the ball down low and score. Let's see if they can get another layup. Coco. Thomas. For three. Thomas. Takes it up to a 24-15 lead. And we really hope to see more of that during this game, her just being that outside threat. Dillard posted up down low. Czar gets rid of it starting to fall. And, and even when they missed that three at the end of the first quarter, we thought the guy was applauding. Yeah. Saying, that's okay. That's a good shot. I don't mind it. Uh, I like how uh, Senegal is picking their pace up on offense to get those good shots, penetrating by Saar and kicking it out to the corner for that three-point shot. Coco turns it over. And you can see that uh, defense always generates that offense and it's exactly what Senegal did. They came out here, they changed their zone and they're making it hard for Cameroon to get the ball in the paint. Changed their zone to a 1-2-2 and they've been able to get steals and, and score. So hopefully they stay in that 1-2-2 and hopefully Cameroon adjusts to that. Let's talk about the three-point shooting from Senegal though. I mean, yes, they're open shots. Yes, Mustafa Guy is applauding them. But the reality is, even when they miss, the reality is they've only shot 25% coming into this, and today there's two of eight. Now, you do get some rebounds off this misses, obviously, but it does kind of make you wonder if uh, sometimes you go inside. Here comes Thomas. I mean, that last triple penetration to that kick-out corner for three, I think that was just a really good, yeah. a good move. Locks out, Nwoto gets it, and now Ngeko. Ngeko makes the mistake by putting the basketball down, Not dribbling. Post player put the ball down for these guards to swipe at it. Just goes straight back up. Dillard, they allow her to go right down the lane, and a foul as well. So it's a weak defense on both sides. You think so? I think, uh, I mean, no, goes, well, nobody picked up Dillard. Oh, well, yeah, that side, but for her to get that steal and go down coast to coast and lay it up and finish, I think Senegal's defense is picking up because Cameroon is having that little struggle right now. So kudos to that, to just seeing how Cameroon was uh, making their shot into the post and Senegal changed their defense. But yes, Cameroon definitely needs to get back on defense. <laughs> uh, Dillard makes the free throw. I guess my main concern is that 
Cameroon still able to get the basketball inside to Ngeko in the first place. So if she just goes straight up with it, I mean, that's she's true. not going to turn it over. And then you see, again, Senegal in that 1 2 2. Captain Ture on top of the key. Nice pass, Odu. Oh, nice. Oh, doesn't drop. And this time the bank, uh, the box out rather. Only a three point lead, so I guess uh, Mustafa Guy had good reason to be confident. So lots of rebounds and runs. Look out. Well, she's explosive, isn't she? She hands it off. Ooh. That was King, King Wee who, King Wee who uh, missed that shot. Incredibly, Senegal can pull to within one and uh, traveling on Kyung. Plus, you might have a three point play coming. Yeah, I mean, that was a good look for um, that mismatch right there and that low post against uh, Jessica Thomas. She did shuffle her feet. Good spot. So timeout on the court, 24-21. Cameroon seems to be more controlled, but it's just a three-point lead against Senegal. Je well, three points for Puna. Gonna sit down. It's strange. It, it doesn't feel like Senegal played that well, but yet here they are, 24-21 trailing Cameroon. And Cameroon have, don't seem to be able to pull away from teams, but maybe that shouldn't be surprising. I have been seeing the pattern with Cameroon. They start off really well, but then when the team adjusts to them, it's like, oh, what do we do? And it's play the same game. Be poised, get the ball to your players, and just play basketball. That's another miss. Again, that was Kiwi missing. Well, it's tight if it falls, but it doesn't. Yeah, drives in. She missed. Now a chance to run. They want to push it quickly if they can. Anyway. You see Jessica Thomas setting the team up, making sure everyone's in their spots. Order the dead eye shooter doesn't get it to drop. Dang, this pass with Thomas lurking, and now Saar turns it over. Inui. She went up, and I think if Yang had to do it, do it all over again, or yeah, if Yang had to do it all over again, she wouldn't have tried to, to stop that. So I don't know what I don't know what that Kiwi was doing. I don't know, but it's a good take for Cameroon right now, and hopefully the, she makes these free throws, and it, it's just a. A energy booster, and they get back on defense, and they play aggressive defense, and they move the ball. Uh, you know, while Senegal's moving the ball, their defense of Cameroon is shifting. So you never want to see a drop of energy just because a team switches up. That's the whole point of basketball. They see what you're doing well, and they're obviously going to try to stop it. Then what do you do to combat that? 
So the free throws take it back up to a five point lead. You see the two nationalized guards for Cameroon and Senegal right now. Pulls up. The winner of this game will face the winner of Molly Guinea in the semifinals. Doing it quickly to Saw. Much nicer from Senegal now. They're speeding it up a bit and they get a layup out of it. And that's Sar's game to attack the basket and be strong and physical. Or one of the many veterans in this Senegal team. Boyo missing from deep. Marker has been on the bench for a while now. Yeah, she has. Not sure why. She has, oh, she has two personal fouls, maybe that's why. Which is unusual for her. Plays solid defense. And into Yang, and oh, I don't know if it's going to be a foul. They go looking for the travel. I mean, you talk about experience. It really, Sar, 39 years of age. Prior A, 40 years of age. Both of them on the board right now for Senegal. You know, they've been playing Jang a lot. See the attempts there from. Going up and change, and she goes to the line. She's definitely stepped up for Cinnamon. She has the last two games. She's the last two games for sure. And you just love to see that uh, coming off of the bench the, the first game and actually having that opportunity the second game step up to be able to start the third game. You just love to see that. Um, players' growth while they're playing in tournaments. Bounce pass, Gecko, good play, and one. And uh, even though the paint was clogged, she was still able to get bounce pass through the gecko. Wow, there was not much space at all there. So, another timeout. 28 25. Cameroon, they'll be shooting a free throw when we come back to action. 127 remaining in the first half. You love to hear timeouts. That was the, the bench of Cameroon. And 
you hear the coach, but you also hear the point guard, Jessica Thomas, leading the team saying, hey, let's do this, let's do that, and let's you know rally up together and actually close the lead right now, or extend the lead. You mean Dillard? No, that was... Oh, that was Tom. You talked yeah. about from the Cameroon bench. Yeah, Tom, Cameroon oh, bench. Sorry, 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 gotcha. Yeah. Gecko, three-point play. Four-point lead. Here's Dillard. Steps back. Goes down. He's told to get up. Sar. Oh boy, it's two finish, two finishes right at the basket for her in a row. You're right, she looks much better driving. She's been pretty, I mean, she, pretty important today. Yeah, I mean, she does have that three-point shot. I definitely have to guard it, <laughs> but she also has the drive, and she's just a, a tall guard that knows how to attack the basket. She's got eight points. In fact, both she and Dillard with eight points apiece leading the way. That's pretty good defense there. Thomas wide open, that's a mistake. Bam! Shooter, shoot! If you leave her right open, she's gonna take her shot and she's knocking them down. Dillard uh, has been taking a pounding out there. And Koyuk with the little collision. have been long, but there's been a lot of fouling. Now today, nine fouls for Cameroon and nine fouls and uh, just four fouls for McCauley in Senegal. So it does feel like a lot of fouling, a lot of stoppages. So your has it. Salatza turns, goes up, and no joy from against Yon. And again, a chance for Senegal. Look at that. Oh, Massar made the catch, but wasn't able to stop. Shot clock doesn't make it. She had no choice. I guess she could have passed it to somebody else, but I think for uh, for Cameroon, still promising yet a lot of work to do. And uh, I think Coach knows it. Enjoy you. This is anything but a secure lead. 32 to 29 against Senegal at halftime. That's really good. Uh, Senegal has nine turnovers to Cameroon's five, so they've had, they have controlled the ball and took care of the ball. 18 rebounds for Cameroon and 21 for Senegal. The score is 32 to 29, and I just think that uh, the way that Senegal, I mean, Cameroon dropped is only because of the defense of Senegal. The way that they're switching it up, one time after after a timeout, they were in man, and then when they Cameroon took the ball out, they went into the zone. So. That confusion for Cameroon is really messing with them offensively for them to not get the rhythm, but they need to understand that that's just basketball. Yeah. Are you going to adjust? Are you still going to go inside, and, or are you going to settle for the defense Cameroon is giving you? And that's just where I saw the lapse in Cameroon. And Senegal 
I mean, they're taking their shots, they're just not falling. And the fact that they have generated a lot of good offenses because of their defense is the reason why they're in this game. So Dillard leading him with 10 points. Saar already above her average of seven and a half points a game. She's got eight. And also the continued fine play, at least offensively, of their number 45, Fatu Young, has been important for this uh, Senegal team. She's got six points. And the, you asked the question, where's Makani? She hasn't scored. She's she taken one shot. Yeah, but she's, she went to the bench with two fouls, and that's why. I mean, that's just a, a smart play. Do you sacrifice? I mean, coaches call. Do you sacrifice the first half and keep her in? Might pick up the third, or do you sit her down, let her rest, and have her in for 20 minutes for the rest of the, the second well, half? She uh, would have been an MVP candidate coming into today. Uh, she hasn't scored after nine and a half minutes. We're at halftime, 32-29. Cameroon on top of Senegal. Unique character. Unique chemistry. FIFA Basketball World Cup is the peak of the game. It's the toughest competition in the basketball world to win. That is why I will be there. Because when you win for one, you win for all. Still Fernando driving in.
Jared Diller with 10 points leading the way for Senegal today in their well, knockout game, the quarterfinal against Cameroon. That's a game high 10 points. And I, I really get the feeling that really the sense of urgency hasn't been there for either team yet. I would expect that intensity level to go up in the second half. Senegal have uh, been calm, they've been patient. And uh, they haven't been able to take the lead yet, but if they can get their noses in front and really uh, turn up, turn it up a notch on defense, might just might just sneak a win here today against Cameroon, who's been one of the better teams in this tournament. Remember Cameroon opening up with a narrow win over Mozambique, getting the late shot from Makani, but. You know, for Cameroon, you might expect Makani to be leading it, but it's been in Gecko today. She's been able to get some catches down low. Her back to the basket game has been tough. And she has uh, carried them uh, seven points. So the question is, with Cameroon, can they turn it up a notch? Can they get Makani involved? It seems, it seems to have been somewhat of a static performance from them. They started well, but they haven't been able to, to really get it going. So 32-29, Cameroon on top. Ify, what is your is your impression the same as mine that, that maybe when we talk about that sense of urgency, that intensity, it's maybe it, it needs to go up a little bit for both of these teams? I definitely think it needs to go up for both of these teams. Of course we talked about Senegal, how they play. It's like a it's, I don't know if it's like a calm, relaxed, like movement, but there's no go or, or sense of urgency in them. But for Cameroon, I definitely think they came out and played hard, but when Senegal just switched that defense and continues to switch that defense, that messes up the Cameroon offense, and that's when they're stagnant, and that's when they they look lost. So I definitely think intensity needs to be higher. This is the quarterfinal of an Afro Basket 2023. Like, it needs to be higher, and it needs to be, I don't know, more, I guess, fluid? And they haven't shot the ball well either. Yeah. 13 of 34, 10 of 23 inside the arc, three of 11 from deep. Um, so, and Makani, you know, we haven't said, if you look at Dillard there with the game high 10 points, we haven't said the word silky smooth once today. So it feels I mean, like Cameroon's not playing their yeah, game. Yeah, and maybe she's that player that needs to be on the court for that momentum to go. Um, as you saw, Dillard here, she was on the floor. She didn't start this game, but she came out and was very aggressive. For her not to start, she's showing like, hey, I'm here to play and I'm here to stay <laughs> as a naturalized player. And she has, the, she's the leading scorer right now with 10 points, but Makani is the, the key kind of to the way and the, the way Cameroon plays. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I mean, she was just on the bench for two fouls. What can you do with that? That was a smart coaching decision to sit her, but have her back ready to play in the second half. Yeah, that seems like the only plausible explanation as to why she, don't, she only played nine, nine and a half minutes. Yeah. She got two quick ones. But with Mustafa Guy, you have to think, the coach of Senegal, he's changed his lineup so much. And we look at Diop there, she hasn't played today. She's been one of their best players, I think. I mean, she played very well yesterday. She was one of the leading scorers uh, yesterday with 10 points. But again, she came off the bench. Senegal hasn't found that starting five that could really go, that can, that can gel well. They have from start to finish, from the whole bench, they have players. It's just finding that core five players to come in and make something work. And I think that's what Senegal is just trying to find out. And it just happens to be during tournament play when uh, Cameroon, they know who their starters are, they know who their go-to. It's just that when you don't have one of your silky smooth on the court, it's kind of like who else is gonna step up? And I mean, there are players there. Jessica Thomas hit some of her shots and was facilitating as she's always done, but that is a key player for Cameroon. And hopefully she doesn't get a quick third one and stays on the court so this Leeds can uh, advance more. I mean, who, who, which countries, which national teams, coaches, players would have been under the most pressure from the media back home? I guess Senegal's number one because they've got the most media here. 
So the expectations are high. You think it's a, a, a lot of pressure on them? Well, I mean. I'm sure they're used to it, but. Yeah, I do think so. Egypt also up here. It's a, honestly, it's a new different team that I've even played against that I've seen. You have a lot of new and a lot of veteran players, a lot of players that didn't play last year in return. So they're just fighting their way. It's just, it's just in tournament play. They are very capable. This Senegal team is very capable of showing up and showing out. It's just who is going to lead the way? Who is going to lead the way? And uh, someone has to step up. Raya the 40-year-old is the captain. Yeah, she has. She just hasn't making her shots. Sar has been taking it to the basket, shooting her three-point shots. You have the nationalized player here on the screen, Dillard, trying her best. Even from the bench, you have Yassine Diab. When she comes in the game, she's trying to make something shape, but it's just not consistent. And we've said this from the beginning of the first game of this tournament. Who plays the most consistent game for 40 minutes ends up winning. And uh, I think Senegal understands how critical this game is. It's the quarterfinals in Afro Basket. And it yeah. just, it you win or you're playing <laughs> classification games. Exactly. And, uh, you win, you want to get at least two wins to get into the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament. So that is also is a backdrop. But speaking of the sense of urgency, maybe the one player who does is Salatza. And it's kind of a, a weird game for her. And I don't know if, because she showed flashes in this game of, of being like she was she started against off Mozambique. very, very strong. And uh, she's played an amazing game against but Mozambique. Didn't play the second game, even though they qualified straight to the quarterfinals. She had a little bit cramp issues. And she came out fierce today, but then again, what did Senegal do? Change their defense. She wasn't getting really those post entry that passes. And if she was, she was getting hit. She was getting bumped. And so hopefully uh, Cameroon comes out and she comes out and uh, Makani comes out, Thomas comes out and actually plays together no matter what defense Senegal throws at them. And that's the only downfall that I see Cameroon is having right now. Struggling identifying or knowing what to do against the different defenses. Just that thinking change that, yeah. on, a, on, a on a fast trip pace. by trip basis. Yeah. But as we all know, basketball is a game of runs. And so I'm gonna let you take this one over. <laughs> Go okay. ahead. I know you want to. <laughs> Download the app to get courtside night eighteen ninety one in your smartphone. Next time so I got you. that barcode. But again, we'll definitely see who comes out here and wins. Second half action underway, Senegal trying to tie it up, and they do with Diller. She didn't start the first uh, first quarter, but she definitely started the, the third quarter. And she's up right now. Maybe that's the key, don't start her. She's got 13, having her best game. Jessica Thomas, Odu, box out, Yang, uh, and Gecko. Now Senegal can take the lead for the first time. Here is Dillard again. You better believe it! She knocks it down back to back threes to start the second half. She got 16 points. And Cameroon, you've got a problem on your hands. Thomas drives in. Fouled by Dillard. Well, there have been times when it feels like 
Dillard has been a little frustrated with her role or with the way the team has played. And she's just kind of taking matters into her, her own hands. Yeah, sometimes that happens with players. They, you know, get really frustrated on the court, and it could be a good thing. And you can see it on Dillard. She came out here, she hit two threes to set the tempo and the pace. And I, and I said at halftime, what player is going to do that? And she's just showing that she can, that she is it. Maybe when you think about Senegalese players, they're much more like, we've got to do what Coach says, or we've got to, we've got to do it this way, we've got to do it that way. Sometimes you just got to take the shackles off and play. Yeah, and that's just having no fear. Like, maybe he'll sit me down, or maybe he'll keep me in because I have that grit to do it. This year's game will be three in a row. You get the feeling that she wanted to put up again. The Sar passes up the three, drives, and Gecko goes up and brings it down. I would have taken that three from Sar. But she's she, Thomas. Yeah, she's shown she could shoot it. She should have took the, that three point shot. Oh, nice pass out to Thomas. Off to the left. Gecko not able to save it in round. starting point guard as the starting four player. That's just amazing to see how active she is, and hopefully she can get herself going on this uh, offensive end. I feel like it's got to be Maka this time. Nice. Feeds it into the low post. Gecko puts Cameroon back in front. Sar for three. Oh, the bank is open. Edwell's right there. She had her hand down. We know that Sar can shoot. Put your hands up. <laughs> and just make the shot a little bit harder. Not gonna get to Salanza. Salanza goes up. Foul on Sar. Her punishment as well. Good section. Watch the knee. What can you really say about her? Like, she is the starting four of Cameroon's national team guarding point guard. That's, that's just amazing. And then also showing up on offense and showing up on defense. And it's, it's not easy guarding point guards. I've tried it, and I don't like it. So just for her to just be so aggressive and so aware that her team needs her in this role, and she's stepping it up and not complaining at all, it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, I like her. I was just uh, confused as to why she sat down. It seemed like for a long time. The first half, which is just the second. Well, I guess I, I don't know what I'm talking about because she did play 18 minutes. So maybe she was a little bit more anonymous than uh, she needed to be. Here she is trying to stick with Dillard. Offensive foul on Tiang. That was a moving screen. to call the moving screen. Amazing. Look at her just being tenacious, trying to get over and under those screens. That one same screen. Maybe because she was working so hard, that helped her get that call. Ref, do love that. It's a hot shot from the elbow. Count it. You can just see the emotional charge that she gives this team. Makani is uh, smooth. Actually, it's more like fire and ice, isn't it? She's the fire, and my kind of advice, but... Love that. And foul, three-pointer, three, on the three, so Salanza does foul. 
Dillard from behind the arc. So three free throws. Well, Dillard has become kind of the central figure in this uh, Senegalese attack today. Yeah, she already has 16 points on the free throw line, three for three, three assists. It's not like they haven't tried. Okay, so what are the referees discussing here? Is it a sports, or whether it's a sportsman like? I think if it's a two or three. It, it, feels like, it feels like Senegal has tried to, to play this game, but ultimately, maybe they just need somebody just to say, enough, just give me the ball, let me go. And that's kind of what Dillard is doing. That's exactly what she's doing. And then you have to, when you have that one player, say like, hey, I'm going to be the player to step up and show up. Who's following the lead? And that doesn't necessarily mean scoring all the time. It's defense, boxing out, rebound, assist, steals, diving on the floor. So who's going to follow on the Senegalese team in Diller's footsteps? She makes two out of his three free throws. It's back to a one-point lead. Senegal still in that 2-3 zone. A oh, beautiful bounce pass outside to Makani. She needed to make that. She did. Because they passed up a couple of shots. Yeah, to get that confidence going, her confidence going. She's been on the bench for 2,000. First bucket of the game. Yep. Diller in the corner. And Traore missing. Here comes Neodu. Neodu gets it off to, oh, Salatza. And Charge called on Salatza. That is number three. I mean, you love to see the, the aggressiveness, but you have to be smart. You know that uh, you have two fouls. You are needed on the court. So hopefully the coach keeps her in, trusts her, and we'll see about that.
pass. Knocked down. Here comes Dia. Barre catches it and draws the foul from Georgia. This game is not moving in the right direction for Cameroon. Yeah, Cameroon definitely needs to step it up. They just look like they're having their lapses as they did in the first quarter. And Senegal, the Senegal team is making sure they pay for that. Well, from an offensive standpoint, we're just seeing some really good, good plays, good yeah. decisive plays from Senegal. Yep. First from Dillard, that Diop move was maybe the best move in the game. It looked like she was going to pass it to the corner and get it. So timeout. Let's go down to the hole. You see, boom. You see, you will. Any confidence on what's here? Be confident. Don't, don't be afraid. Okay? But work first, first. Pass, play here, jump shoot, like she do, like uh, Monique did earlier. On joue, on donne, on enchaîne. Okay? Okay? Jouer sur Chi. Play Chi. Okay? Play Chi. Right? Hey, guys, girls. Yeah, yeah. We, got, we are giving them the game. We are giving them the game. It is the moment of truth for Salatza in Cameroon. She's got nine points and five rebounds, and it looked like she had them on the way with some of her uh, her plays and her defense at the start of this quarter. But Senegal have moved in the front, and obviously right now every every time they had another lead, it's the biggest lead. Of the game. Both free throws. Okay. Now they turn it over. Just an unforced turnover. Look at this. Trying to make her move. You just hate to see that from a timeout where you have that time to just settle the nerves and come back out and execute. And then you just make a lousy uh, turnover. Diller penetrates, drive, scores! She's the MVP of this game. There's Thomas open in and out. And Senegal basketball. Leading by eight. We talked about where yep. she been, put yep. her in, coach, and she comes right out and gives him a double-digit lead. She had to play the whole first half, and here she goes on the court, stepping up, making her shots. I just can't understand why she just came in. She's, she's been really good before. What, a, yeah. what do you have to do? Well, Coco for three, oh, that doesn't look good at all. And they are lucky that Apple was there and the ball fell to her. Right now, this Cameroon team lacking a little confidence. They are changing their defense. They look like they're in a 2 3, and hopefully, that's just to stop the penetration. And oh, good job. Just Mike like that. Knocking it away. Here's Thomas. Oh, tripped up from behind by Diop. That could be an unsportsmanlike. They could look at it if they wanted. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, you can see here Jessica in the open court and uh, just getting tripped up by the Senegalese jersey. Well, she didn't come close to getting the ball when she reached in. She got her on the arm. I think that's a nice horseman like. They yeah. huddled up. Yeah. They're going to go look at it. I mean, they do have the, the opportunity for the to yeah, look yeah. At the review, but they're huddled on the side. Yeah, so this 
called it as a normal foul, but they're going to look at it now. Big IP players to go to their bench. see here on the review, Jessica Thomas in the open floor and just getting tripped up. And it doesn't look like she was going for the ball, but, you know, maybe it was a little Trip. frustration because she lost the ball. Well, first she kind of bumps her. But maybe Thomas kind of moved into her path. Now there it looks more like she is going for the ball, but she's so far away from it. They may not upgrade this. I mean, and now it's a second bump. Do you think they would call the first bump or just uh, see the right there the, and then you see it again. Okay, well, the moment of truth. Yep, they're going to give it normal. And they called her for the trip on the hip. Or the hit on the hip. And then the trip. Of relief. No free throws. Thomas pulls up. Oh. Sorry, hits Thomas. So two free throws now for Thomas. Yeah, I think it's kind of uh, 
she's the player, and it feels like the level of the team just goes up. She makes them better when she's playing like this. She kind of needs to be it, if you know what I mean. You can almost see sometimes when she's passing, she's, doing, she's making extra concerted efforts to get everybody else involved, but she could easily take the shot herself. I think it helps it. Out there, interesting team squeeze in the game as well. Makani now gets her pass to F a good play. Off. That's good defense from Pui. That's a key up. Times in, gets blocked, and it's fouled by F. Just ran onto the court under the basket and grabbed Pui and shook her. What in the world? I've never seen that. And that might just be. My goodness. Anyway. Uh, 57 52. Senegal on top of Cameroon at the end of three. We'll try to find out what's going on. Okay, so as you look at the shooting numbers, look at Senegal's free throw shooting. Both teams shooting it well from the line, but that has been old reliable, hasn't it, for Senegal? Yeah. One thing they know they can do is make their free throws. Boy, that line. is very important. Yeah, the 17 team for 19 right now. And let's take a listen to the timeout. There's no timeout. We're going to talk about the game. We're still a little bit shaken by what we just saw with Mustafa Guy running under the court to shake Pui, but I spoke too soon. There are some highlights of the third quarter. I mean, it's been a very good, tough third quarter, and uh, I would believe Senegal won that battle. Definitely won that battle, but Cameroon finished it off as best as they can. 52 to 57 right now, and uh, Cameroon definitely needs to come out here with some poise, patient, and understand there will be pressure, the three keys, and actually just get the ball in the basket and send a goal for them. Just continue to do what they're gonna do. Dillard has been amazing in the in this second half for them. Cameroon having eight turnovers while Senegal has 14, so Cameroon is definitely taking care of the ball. They just need to get the ball in the basket. Hopefully, whatever happened between uh, the coach and the player does not affect Senegal. Senegal at all, because that could be that could bring everyone down. Fourth quarter underway, 57-52, Senegal on the top. And, uh, Senegal with a five-point lead. 
Emotions running high, stakes are high. Frustrations after a difficult tournament for Senegal. He got the lead, They're playing pretty well. And uh, just at the end of the third quarter, as you look at Fiat running down the floor, but stop the guy just ran all the way out on the court under the basket. And started really having a go at Plea. Yeah, and then put his hands on her and shook her all those. You never and you could see her under sitting sitting on the bench. You can see he is he has uh, really got the intensity going and I don't know there he is right here. This is it. Look at this. And then he shakes her. Maybe because she's talking back to him, but a good job from Yang coming out to kind of calm things down. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know. I mean, you play, but if you're the coach, surely you can't run all the way up the court like that. To have a go with the player. And if you're the player, clearly you don't want to answer back, but she was like kind of almost. Yeah. I never really want to see that. I mean, so then he grabs her. Anyway, Thomas, go up, Makani. Neodo, Salatza, and Gecko on the court for Cameroon. Salatza comes out. Ironically, he could end up helping Senegal in that situation for the Cameroon. I mean, it could go both ways. It could be harmful or it could be actually helpful uh, for them to rally together or break apart in this fourth quarter. Wow, good job, Makani. Maybe she's going to save the best for last because she just has not been the factor today that she needs to be. And there she is, the pass. Leads to order being pushed over by Yang. Yang, excuse me. I mean, you know, the opposite end, you've got Joya. Again, let's get a replay. You've got Joya, who's on the old laid back coaches team. He would never do anything like that. Now the pass gets away from off the hands of Thomas and into the hands of Dillard. Point shot, not there. Yoda from the right. It's good. That's her second three. That is her spot on that court. Those baseline quarter threes for Awildo, she's going to make them if she's wide open. And she saw the green line and shot it and made it. Mustafa Guy is also, his team is leading, but he is furious now with, with Jang, or Jackman, and anyway, we'll go down to the bench and listen. Nous choisissons de ne pas être dans l'intensité. Nous choisissons de ne pas être dans l'intensité. Revenez à des pressions fondamentaux. Repli avec intensité, contre avec intensité. Tout de on la suit. Sur le on la suit. Aya, amenez-vous dans votre 1 contre 1. 1 contre 2. Moi, il basque. Ne, ne faites pas trop d'aide. Parce qu'après, il y a un shoot. Maintenant, big, sortez. Ne le plus en cours. Switchez, sortez, vous switchez carrément. Si il y a un switch en haut, sur Aya, Aya défend sur le plus haut et vous sortez carrément à switch. Ok, les gars, allez, on y va. Allez, on y va. Well, we heard him. I mean, you know, the pressure is the pressure is uh, about as big as it gets right now for Senegal. They're up by several points. I mean, you and guys under pressure. I mean, he yeah. wants to win. He wants yeah. to win for Senegal. The players want to win. They, they have but, a lengthy lead against uh, Cameroon, and the fact that uh, they're only up by two, he's very upset as as a head coach of Senegal. I mean, there's a amount of pressure on him, but at this point, with eight minutes left, the team to block out all the outside noise and play together. No matter what the coach, system coach, the, the fans, or what's going on, the Senegalese team needs to stay together in a situation like this. You never want to see that. But I mean, it, ha it, ha it happens. But what do they do? How do they face adversity when it's inside? Do you stay together on the team with the five players on the court? I think you do. Here's Dior. Gecko. Gecko, raise her hand, 
I mean, I think the bigger issue is, uh, does does he does guy lose his authority at all with the players? Are they going to listen to him if he's talking to them? I mean, they've all seen it. I mean, as a player, sometimes you don't want to listen to your coach, but you listen to the captain, you listen to the veteran players, and Terrell's in the game right now, and veteran players like Sar and Dillard, the leader on the the point guard there. Maybe they listen to them. Tyre, an air ball from her. Yeah, so this could definitely bring Senegal together or bring them apart. And you'll just see it. It will unfold before our eyes right now. Makani drives, dumps it off. And that was about as silky smooth as you get right there. Into the paint. Now Thomas cuts off Dillard. Uh, drives in, bites him in. That was a big time play from her. And they're definitely staying together. I love to see that. This, I, I really think this is going to be a story after the game about what we just watched the this third quarter. I just, I just don't accept that that's, that should be allowed in the game of basketball. I'm surprised he didn't get teed up. There's the three-pointer. And Thomas strokes it from deep. She has 15 points leading the way for Cameroon right now. What an amazing shot from her. Max puts it up. Oh, boy, she is really rising to the occasion, isn't she, for the second consecutive game. Odo for three, good! She is showing her quality right now. And you know, if she is in that corner, three point spot, she's going to shoot it. And she's shown time and time again in this tournament that she could make it. And Senegal needs to step up on their defense. So Cameroon head over to the bench. That could be the game changer shot. Boy. It's all about the fourth quarter today, isn't it? The three, first three quarters were nothing compared to this. Une passe, deux passes, fille à fille. On avait fait un Dakar, non? deux passes, one, two, fille à fille. Allez, let's go. Pas tout, pas tout, pas tout, pas tout, tu restes sur le 11. À tout bon, pas tout. Ouais, c'est le You just see Cameroon taking advantage of what's going on on the Senegalese side and just running with it. You had Jessica Thomas, her open three, Edouard, her open three, and now they're 63 to 61. Look at that, 13.6 rebounds. She has really risen to the occasion once again. We don't want her to get any more touches because she's been red hot. And penetrates out to Sar for three. And back with the rebound. Just and attacked with the D from Cameroon. And really, it, it feels like the first time in the game that Cameroon have actually been able to speed the game up to their liking, to play their game, to play with a sense of urgency. Eodo, obviously, look at the bounce pass. It's lots of, doesn't catch it cleanly, but keeps her poised, puts it up and in. And the lead now four. Long way to go.
Diller into the paint. Wow, she is just carrying this team today, isn't she? She has 24 points now for Senegal. Up in the 17 late points. Third quarter until now. The sportsmanship. Gecko picks up Jang. And really, Gecko, she can't help that she's big and is in that spot. Jang rewarded for uh, for initiating and attacking. up with a steal. Takes it away from Odo. And Dillard blocked and fouled by Silatsa. And Dillard looks like she's in pain. That looked like a very, very hard foul. You see here, her going up. And her body uh, just twists in the air. As she I don't falls. think it's a hard foul. I just think she's losing her balance somehow. Look at this. I think it's a hard foul because she fouled it. She's rolling. Watch this, watch this. I think that's a hard foul. I mean, everyone has a different perspective. <laughs> a hard foul for me is from the start of being fouled to when you land. Right, okay, <laughs> the whole I got process. You. I got you. Oh, yeah. So from that standpoint, it is. She had a hard fall. Yeah. I just, I just didn't see much contact there. 
Hurts gets up. Now the question is, how does this impact her? Yeah, she's right there. Like to explain that. <laughs> well, some famous moment with the New York Knicks. Willis Reed could barely walk. Here we go again. I mean, she swipes at the ball, but she's in front of her, and to me, it looks like she doesn't even make contact. You see her reaction. It's a lot of And I think Dillard, to her credit, is driving hard, trying to maybe even get contact. They're going to actually review it. I think they're going to review to see if it's in sports for life. No, I, that's good. I don't think so, but I do believe it's out. But why would Senator, yeah. I mean, it's good that they're just, you know, dogging their eyes and crossing their teeth to just to look at it. And you can see right watch here. Show me the contact right here. It's the, watch, they're going to play it another. The contact angle. is when Dillard reaches out her left arm for me. Baseline. Look, I don't think she catches her. I don't think she gets her. I mean, I don't, I definitely don't think there's enough evidence from what we've seen to overturn just from a normal foul, but to me, she doesn't even make contact. But anyway, I mean, these are, these are tough calls to make. Her whole body's hit. Something hit. I've not <laughs> seen it. Here, look okay, at this again. Look. look. So she's in front, so that's Dillard pushing off on her. I see Dillard making the contact with her left arm. Maybe they're like you and I, or you're seeing one thing and I'm seeing another. How do you resolve this? I mean, you just look it over and review it, and we'll see what they come up with. There's absolutely no way they call that a sports foul. So they just call it a normal foul. I think now they, in my opinion, they're looking at that and thinking, Oh, gee, maybe I uh, should have caught the foul. Maybe they'll reward her. Well, this this extra time for Dillard has... Okay, so she's oh, going to come out. Wow. So I guess she would like to take the shot, but maybe she's injured her leg. Ooh. Oh, she's got blood. She's not allowed to play. These are big free throws. In the game, and again, there's no substitute for a great free throw shooting team, really. They have been good. Oh, that makes one of two. And that room did not rebound it, so it will stay at this end. Accepted. Great job by Salazza. Tied game, 67-67. Two minutes left here in the fourth. Thomas back to Salazza. She gets it to a gecko. Goes to the left hand, and she is fouled. Dillard back in the game. And it's taped up. Look at this. This thing get good. Look at the footwork. And that just kind of like arrives a little too late. And a get her footwork is sublime, isn't it? We saw it against uh, Guinea. Both teams are playing at such a high level of competition competing right now for their country in this fourth quarter. Salazzo goes up for the offensive rebound. And both players chasing it. Look at Diop and they're scrapping away. Wow, not able to retain it. 
as Salazar put pressure on him. Look at this. I mean, how great is that? To, so she threw it off the leg and then it bounced back off her. And, I mean, that was, I got I to gotta credit our cameraman for that one. That was a great <laughs> look, and we saw it immediately. Well done, guys. Girls, here we go. My kind of drives. Different paint. Oh, the shot clock about to expire. And good block from Dayan. Miller. Back up on the two-minute mark. It's just a two-point lead for Cameroon. Oh, great anticipation again from Salazar. Contact and gets the, the foul. Three free throws coming for Dillard. Such an intelligent player. Yes, yes. I think she's always seeking contact. I mean, yeah. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not against that. I think it's, I think it's good. But Thomas is like, she definitely knows how to use her, her body. Uh, Watch this when she goes into the body of. I think the problem with Thomas there right is she's got her hands on when she goes up. I mean, I think she had it because she was initially going over and with on that uh, that 45 screen, and then Diller was just smart in that play and just uses that and gets herself to the free throw line. Well, meanwhile, she's having the, uh, the game of the day, her game of the tournament. Yeah, she has eight or nine at the free throw line right now. My goodness. Nine for Ted. It's a big call. 26 points. I think that's the right call, really. I mean, yeah, it's a good call. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. She's a smart player and knows how to use her pocket when needed. And Dillard makes all three. Look at that. Is that going to be the play of the game? Can they get Oda free for another three? Can they get some penetration? Can they get it back to Gecko? What's the plan? And Makani. Get a touch, but will it be Thomas? She takes it deep, and she was fouled by Yassine Gia right at the end of the shot. Wow. Thomas is taking it an attacking, and then that swipe down. You don't need to do that. It's, uh, it was 1.9 seconds left. The shot clock is uh, winding down. That's just not a good foul right now, especially since it goes up by one. And now Thomas is. Ooh, she gets it to drop. Three-pointer is good wow. from Kuna. Wow, what a shot. All these stars rising to the occasion at the right time of the game. I'm not sure Priore can hang with Thomas. Now they switch. He gets rid of it to Salanza Thomas. Surely you got to drive to the basket here. And she does. Oh. So, and Gecko follows it up and is fouled. Oh, no. Oh, because she did not hit the rim. So that is why the ball turns over. You know, Thomas, I think, was waiting for the last second to go. She ended up having a time. 
time, but she didn't get the rim. So now, Cameroon. I mean, Cameroon has time. They have to play some tough defense right now. There's 38 seconds left in this game. This is a crucial moment for them. Here goes Dillard again. Wide open in the right. Good! Puna strikes again! Is that the shot? It's going to put Senegal into the semifinals. What did we say about the fourth quarter? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Why don't we just talk about the last three minutes? I mean, it's just been the later, the better. And when we talk about the three-point shooting, well, this is why they do it, because they can make them. As you see, Dillard coming off of this screen and dishing it to the corner. And if you were Makani, you're thinking, do I help Thomas on this drive against Dillard and yep. leave open that corner? Yes, that's actually the right thing to do. And, but again, Senegal was ready to shoot that three and make it. And this is why we talked about this earlier. I was kind of suggesting that they were perhaps shooting so many threes. But if the three is there, you take it. And well, they've been falling. And uh, what do you, if you were, if you are coming right now, maybe you get Ebrul her shot in that baseline. She's made it time and time again during this tournament. Or do you go to your post player at Gecko and hopefully she gets an ad one? We'll see. Well, whatever you do, you don't wait around too long. Salatza is going to step up and take a three. She's going to make it. Of course she is. Karim Salatza. What a shot. Don't forget, Senegal shoot the free throws very well. And if they can't get a steal, they gotta, they gotta get a foul. They got a foul, yeah. They That's left way the, too much time. Yeah, they the let clock. way too much time run off the clock, and Dillard just not the one that wants to foul, and she's going to the line to shoot too. I don't think there's anybody on the team that you want to foul, to be honest. I think they're all good. I mean, she just hit the three, maybe not. I mean, you're right. But they should have definitely fouled a little bit early while the clock was going down. Still a one possession game. They'll be hoping that she misses this one. As Cameroon needs to be ready for. I mean, Dillard came in shooting 68% at the line. So it wasn't like she was a lock, but in this situation, she's not going to miss him. I mean, she's the player of the game, not even close. Definitely the player of the game of Senegal takes this uh, this win. I mean, Young only made 60%, but she looks good taking her free throws earlier. Let's listen in. Jessica, you go here. Monique, you go here. Okay. Darine, you go here. Okay. Marina, you're here. Okay? Parmin, you're here. Ça marche? Monique, tu vas aller comme ça. Prends les deux écrans. Ok? Comme ça. Darine, après, tu fais écran à Marina qui sort ici. Et, et Hermine, tu refais écran à Monique qui ressort ici. Tu rentres plus près pour dire à qui se passe. Ok? Ok? Moi, tu viens jusqu'ici. Et tu attends que Hermine te mette l'écran. I mean, right now, if you are Senegal, one thing you do not do is foul. foul. You don't want to stop the clock. On the shot. Or foul. Or, or, or foul general. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to do that. In my opinion. Exactly. Uh, you got to get quick, though. You got to get quick if you can. Misses it badly, and she 
She's not going to have the same joy that she had after she made that famous three-pointer against Mozambique and Senegal despite the tough times, the adversity, everything that they've gone through, even in this game. Look at Mustafa Guy, and now who he's, he's going at somebody. I mean, there's just no place in this game for He's going to march off the court. Um, I don't understand what's happening here with uh, Coach Guy. I don't know if it's because he's been under the cost. We're talking about the pressure of the three P's, pressure. Points. Yeah, but there is no place in this purpose. Game. But it's not a good look. No, it's not. I mean, we understand the passion and the pride to represent your country, but we just I mean, it have to be, be smart. I think it, I'm just wondering if there's some relation to, to uh, Pui or somebody, one of the players that he's had a go at that's come down on him. But it is not a good situation. Really bizarre, isn't it? This should be a happy moment for Senegal. Priore uh, makes the free throw, and there is. Oh, she makes the three right at the end. Can you believe it? Wow. Well, too little, too late, unfortunately. For Cameroon, they will play for the classifications, and they will not go to the final. We know that. Then it gets to the semi, and Can Senegal again. Despite everything going on in this game, they win it 80 to 77. They go to the semifinal. Their title hook still alive, and their bid to reach the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament is still alive as well. 80 to 77, Senegal beats Cameroon. What a game. You can see here 49% from the two, 48% to goal, 33% from the three, 36 for Senegal, 77% for the free throws, while 88% for Senegal at rebounds, 33 for Cameroon, 38% to goal. Everything and <laughs> every statistic is kind of the same, and that's why this was a tough game. 77 to 80, Senegal takes it. And these are the top scorers, the nationalized players, Cameroon. Jessica Thomas coming out here having 20, 22 points, and Dillard 29 points. And we'll definitely see the Senegalese team in the semifinals. I don't see Pui out there shaking hands. I mean, it could be that she's already gone back to the locker room. So he was at the center of that practice at the end of the third quarter. So Cameroon, you know, I, I feel like that sense of urgency it just feels like they've waited maybe just a little too late. It wasn't there. I mean, that was, okay. Now, here is, uh, again, the replay of guys. just alarming. Anyway. I mean, we can't take away from Cameroon and how they came out and played. It was an amazing game for them. They had an amazing tournament. They actually beat their bracket 2-0 and zero to be at this qualifying uh, game today. And Senegal, well, they, they stepped up. We, we asked the question when the situation happened on the sideline, is this Senegalese team going to come together as a, as a team or they're going to fall apart? And they definitely came together to beat Cameroon. But kudos to an amazing tournament that Cameroon had. They played well. They played poised. They have amazing players. And I know this Cameroon team will definitely be back and be one of the top contenders at next Afro Basket. Yeah, and there's also the issue of the tough start for Senegal in terms of the tournament. They get to the qualification for the quarterfinal game against Egypt. That gave them a moment to get better, to get that experience, to try to get a feel-good vibe. They came out today. They were, they were still kind of like lumbering through the early stages. I think you and I were kind of questioning the, the lineup, what was going on, who was playing, when was playing. But you know what? They came good in the third quarter. They got their noses in front. Young comes out and really plays well in the low post. Cameroon came out, and in the end, it was just a great basketball game. A great finish. And you can see that Senegal were celebrating like mad. So the road to the final, Senegal 
will now play the winner of Molly Guinea. And we'll also have Rwanda going up against Uganda. The winner will face the winner of Nigeria's game against Mozambique. So those two games on the left, Rwanda, that will tip off at 6 tonight. Nigeria will start at 9 p.m. So next up, Molly Guinea. What a game, a lot of talking points. Thanks for watching. 70, excuse me, 80 to 77. Senegal wins against Cameroon to reach the semifinals of the FIBA Women's After Basket 2023.